and welcome to the Dustin and Eric Podcast Show brought to you by Mimosa Networks. Hi, I'm Dustin. I'm Eric. And today we're on episode number 26. New features. We're going to talk about cloud and Mimosa app features just for you. Special guest today, not a single person. <laughs> See, it's person and title. Person. Thanks, person. Close. Thanks for being here. You had to put something in that space otherwise. It's yeah, usually no. Doug, blank, and today... Person. Person. So right. today's gotcha. main course is new features. So first off, we're going to talk about the Mimosa Cloud point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point CSV import feature. So this was released just a, a few weeks ago. Um, many people probably aren't aware of it, so we want to make sure that you guys know about it. Um, also, there is a CSV export feature coming soon as well. So right now you can import and soon you can export. So how to get to this, uh, for those of you who already have cloud accounts, go to cloud.mimosa.co and sign in. For those of you that don't, you should create an account. Once you've logged in to the Mimosa Cloud, go to design. So once you go to design, if you haven't been there in a while or ever, uh, it should pop up a box saying, what's new? Release version 270. So it talks a little bit about CSV import is now supported. Uh, we've also added a few things like the 6-foot Jiris antenna, uh, updated frequency ranges for the C5C and C5X, the A5C and the A5, and improved the address search to return fewer superfluous results. Also reserved a few uh, bugs Good. as well. So. Wow, you got, got through that one. <laughs> you're, you're over there trying I'm to say always... Superfluous. Superfluous. I, I lucked out, so... Superfluous. Superfluous. <sighs> Please use it in a sentence. Uh, you just did. Next, next slide. All right. So to <laughs> actually do import on point to point and point to multi point, uh, go to design, hit the plus sign, and choose either import point to point from CSV or point to multi point from CSV. So what, uh, in this example, we're clicking on import point to point from CSV. Uh, you have group name, you have choose file to upload a CSV, and then at the bottom, which is the most important thing, is download a sample CSV file. So if you download the sample CSV file, you'll pull it up. It'll be an Excel spreadsheet yeah. with uh, one line that has a default link name, site name A, site name B, latitude A, longitude A, latitude B, and longitude B. Uh, I changed those in this example. So we have one link name, John to Bob Mimosa link. <laughs> And then we have Eric to Jeff Mimosa link. Uh, we have the site names uh, in there, so they'll populate in the map in just a moment. So you'll fill that out. You'll save it. You'll go back to the import point-to-point -point link screen. Uh, make sure you type in a group name uh, because this creates mm -hmm. a brand-new group for you. Uh, in this example, I have import for video just because it creates a new group. Uh, then I upload the actual CSV file import-point-to-point.csv. So you notice that the latitude and longitude is in conventional decimal form. Right. Yeah, so keep it keep it right in that format so that when it crunches, it'll, it'll populate on your topo map. Otherwise, it won't work. Oh, my. So once you import, you then have a new group uh, on the left-hand side of the screen. So we'll go ahead. Uh, in this example here, it says import for video, just what we typed in. Right. Once you click on it, you have all the towers, all the links that you created. So you need to click on those and actually finish setting them up. So we'll go ahead and click on best tower ever. So it brings you to the edit link screen. Uh, you can adjust your tower heights. You can adjust what type of radio it is. Uh, you can change the link settings, whatever you need to do that you would do normally for creating a Mimosa link. So this one comes out just fine. It's a green link. 60 like feet it. above the ground on both sides. What state is this in? Nebraska? This is North <laughs> or South Dakota, I You're believe. At, uh, five miles. So five. Got a green obst uh, obstruction free green line. Right. Path uh, link. So uh, once you're done, hit done. Uh, change any information you'd like if you need to, and then hit save. Uh, and then click on the next link that you have. Uh, this one isn't green, it's red, because we have 100% for nail zone obstruction. So for this example, I raised the height to 150 feet, because Eric is very short, and one of these is called Eric's head, 
The other is Jeff's house. So we're shooting a radio from Eric's head all the way to Jeff's house. I'm going to need that extra 146 feet. Yeah, It's because you're short. So, again, you can change the antennas. uh, You can change the link settings, whatever you need to do. So we'll save Eric's head and Jeff's house. uh, And that's it for that one. All right. So then we also have in the Mimosa Cloud the point, the multi-point view shed. So this has been out for... uh, like I said before, a few months now, but many people probably don't know about it, although many people have asked for it. So let's start off by hitting the plus sign, adding a point to multi-point. Uh, for this one, we're adding it to best tower ever, which was created in the last set of slides. Uh, we'll choose A5C with an M545X4. Uh, we'll change the antenna heading to 270 degrees. Uh, we'll save that, best AP in the world, and save changes. We'll create another AP under the same group on a different tower. So we're creating an AP on Eric's head. So he's just getting loaded down. Uh, A5C N545 uh, X4 facing 180 degrees south. Got a sector, Um, a couple clients in there. We'll name this the AP on Eric's head (laughs) and we'll save changes. But once you do that, you'll see more than one coverage map on your screen. Neat. So you can add multiple APs and have multiple multiple view sheds That's showing fun. on the screen at yep. the same time. That's awesome. Um, the next thing is you can add clients and they actually stay because for a long time you could add right. clients, but you can only look at them during that session. So once you add clients, you hit save. To look at those clients again, you just click on the AP and go into edit mode and they'll show back up. Now, Eric, isn't there something that you want to show us about this as well? Yeah, so I've got a I've got a an active uh, slide here. Let's do a a quick point to multi point system here. I'm going to go to Sacramento, California. It's about 80 miles north of us here. Add a new group. There we go. Sacramento, and I'm going to I'm going to place the AP on this little park here by the Sacramento Executive Airport. Let's add some clients. I've got an A514 at 8 meters. I'm going to, let's draw the view shed. There we go. Awesome. Add, I'm going to double left click. Let's add some clients here. What kind of clients are those? Well, here's a C5. Let's put somebody out here by this way out here on the outside of the, area outside of the view shed and let's get some let's get a guy in inbound there we go and somebody out here I'm looking for some tall buildings I'll give you one of these I think I'm too far south of downtown Sacramento for some some tall buildings oh this is Florin this is guts I know where this is at. This has got some. Hey, here's a guy. He's on the other side of the freeway. Let's click it. Here's I-5. That runs north, south, and down uh, California. All right. So here's an A-5. 14 view shed. A-5 is located 8 meters up. It's at 27, 28 feet in the air. <clears throat> and let's click on a couple of these guys. These are all C-5s. I'm going to add, uh, let's, let's take this uh, client five and change this. Let's, let's give him a C5X and an X25 dB just dish for the heck of it. He might be up too tall, too high, too high up. Management screen, client management screen, and uh, we'll, we'll leave these other guys, C5. I'll leave these alone here. What happens if I give this guy a, a, a 16 dB on client four? All right, at eight meters, A514. Let's see what happens. Let's click on a few of these guys. So it looks like this guy's satisfied with a C5C with a 30 dB dish. That may be something like an RD30. Let's let's see how this guy is at. He's he's out there as well at. Uh, at 1290, he's 1290. These guys are about 1290 meters out. That's uh, eight tenths of a mile, for example. Here's a close guy. What's he looking like? This guy's uh, close in, and 
he's got it. There's a couple options. It looks like at, with his current height at five meters, he's he's okay. He's fine. You can go small on that one. All right. So that's what that looks like with an A5 at uh, eight meters up. Let's let's do something. I'm gonna pull out here, zoom out a little bit, eight meters up. Let's watch the view shed, the blue concentric uh, overlay here. Let's see if this see how this changes. That's eight meters, just for the heck of it. Let's go to 50 meters. That's that's up there pretty high. Let's redraw the view shed. See what it does. It may stay very close to the same. There's the population. And we lost, look at that, way up there we've lost some electrical tilt built into that A514. We've lost a client or two at that height. Look at that, we were losing the clients. Even this guy outside, okay. And watch this. This is just for the heck of it. Let's go 500 meters up, just for the heck of it. Let's redraw the view shed. And at this point, without touching the client locations, we could see everyone's outside, far outside of the view shed, view shed or the coverage area. And even this one guy probably doesn't uh, doesn't have the coverage. He's at the bottom of this monster tower, and that a that uh, that 360 degree uh, pattern on the A514 that down tilt is not going to even reach the, any of these guys at their distances from him. So again, if we lower it back down to, uh, I don't know, 10 meters or wherever it was at, let's see if they come back in the, uh, the pattern. Of course, they, they will. So they're back. So you can see, we can see uh, changes in the, uh, in the radius and the distance from clients to AP changes. And it gets really bad as you go super high up on a tower with a 360-degree access point and so forth. If I came down to, hey, just for the heck of it, let's come down to like four meters. So we've got an access point about uh, uh, about 13.1 feet in the air. What happens? So we lost a couple of guys. And look at this uh, point right here. Let's zoom in. With the access point, that's not even, you know, it's just just above the uh, curtains on that first floor window, <laughs> we've, we've, uh, we've lost some of the pattern, even though, in this example, yep, we've lost that guy too. So he's, uh, he's washed out here, so he's too low on the horizon. So there's, it gives you an idea what the, uh, what the new uh, firmware, the 2.70 uh, uh, NDT uh, firmware will do for you with an access point at different heights. Cool, excellent, thanks Eric. Yep. All right, and the last thing we're going to talk about is the, the new version of the Mimosa installation app. So we, uh, by popular demand, have added offline mode. Uh, for those of you who don't have internet service of any kind, LTE, uh, 4G, 3G, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity at the install location, uh, should be happy to know that we have offline mode available now. So once you log into the Mimosa app, hit the... Uh, the triple um, square icon up in the top left hand corner mm -hmm. uh, on the pop out uh, choose offline mode turn that on uh, what that means is that you can actually cache your uh, your unlock codes so you would go to manual unlock on the app you would scan the QR mm -hmm. codes before mm -hmm. you go out into the field for however many radios you want and the app would cache those keys in in your phone so once you go out in the field, you're at the install location, you don't have any internet connectivity, just go to manual unlock, scan the QR code or type in the serial number, boom, you're good to go. It's already got the unlock key ready to roll for your radio. That's awesome. So yes, that's great. That's everything great. else is exactly the same. So you'd go through the same process. You just already have the unlock key. You don't want to have to worry, worry about internet connectivity. So uh, that's it for uh, this episode of the Dustin and Eric podcast show, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe or follow button to stay up to date with our latest podcast, which will be available on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud.